Hello and welcome to this quick overview and review of this thing here. This is one of the latest chargers from SkyRC. Yes, this little thing is a charger. Looks more like a LiPo checker, but it is actually a charger. It also looks a little bit like it's a toy from a McDonald's Happy Meal. Luckily, there are different colour schemes available, so you don't have to look like you're playing with something that was built by Fisher-Price. However, this is from SkyRC and called the B6neo. One of the chargers that is continually used here is the SkyRC Q200, which is a big, chunky four-port charger that isn't particularly new, but just keeps trucking and does a fantastic job on those days when I need to charge lots and lots of batteries with different capacities nice and quickly for a day out of the field. So it's interesting to get this little charger in from SkyRC. The other reason that it's interesting is because the IMAX B6 chargers were massive in the hobby. They were the first real available affordable LiPo chargers back in 2006, 2007, 2008. So a very, very long time ago. But I was coming into the LiPo battery part of the hobby then and I absolutely had the IMAX B6. In fact, I had two. The first one was a clone. There were loads of clones about. Lots of people selling them on eBay and other places. They were like £10 cheaper, but they were clones, and the performance of them was horrific. If you actually went, went and got a proper one, they worked great, and that's eventually what I did. The balance charge on the clone was horrific. So having a B6 charger in my hand again is really funny. We're a very long way from those first chargers back from 2006. Now this has a reasonable amount of power considering size. This is 200 watts single channel powered by DC. Uh, there's an XT60 on the side and also a PD input as well so you can power it from a USB cable if you have that uh, so that kind of type C PD power could make it very versatile be aware though that if you're using the PD power it's an 80 watt charger not 200 it is really really small it's about a quarter of the size of the original B6 so it's kind of credit card size and again luckily it comes in different color schemes so it doesn't have to look like a Fisher Price toy interestingly the discharging that it can do is multiplied by the balance port the built-in balance port enables the B6 Neo to discharge faster when it is connected allowing it to discharge up to 24 watts when you have both the XT60 and the balance plugged in versus 10 10 watts when you just have the XT60. Has lots of additional safety features which you'd expect on a modern charger. So in terms of the specs, uh, this has a little colour display on here, 160 by 128 pixels, 2.6 inch LCD, power input is 10 to 28 volts, the PD3 QC input is 12 to 20 volts, discharge wattage is a maximum of 24 watts based on 6S. Uh, DC power is 200 watts. If it's PD powered, again, as I've just explained, it's 800 watts or 20 volts, 5 amps. Battery supported are LiPo, LAFE, lithium ion, and LIHV, 1 to 6 cells. It'll also support nickel metal hydride as well as NICAD, 1 to 15 cells, and lead batteries 3S and 6S. Charge current for all of those is 0.1 to 20 amps. Discharge current is 0.1 to 2 amps. Balance current on this is a maximum of 500 milliamps. Made from ABS, it's 70 by 50 by 32 millimeters, and the weight is 82 grams. Using it is very simple and straightforward, and it's nice and intuitive. There's only three buttons. The middle button gets you into the menu, plus and minus changes the value that you have highlighted and selected. Long press of the middle button will get you into the menu to change how everything works. And there's a lot to like about the charger. It can double as a battery checker at the field. You just plug the balance tap into it. Again, like the fact that it has dual inputs, both regular good old DC, if you have a DC power supply on the bench or at the field, as well as the PD 3.0 inputs. 80 watt 6S chargers for a single battery at the field is going to be very handy and 25 watt discharge. I don't think that is into the supply. Uh, that would have been a nice feature to be able to push the power that you're discharging from the battery back into the supply. So if you're using a lead acid battery or something to power it, then that can, power can go somewhere rather than just be dissipated as heat. 
Like many chargers, this also doubles as a bench power supply. It'll supply 5 to 27 volts, uh, 1 to 10 amps. Uh, the screen itself is nice and easy to read. The sound levels by default are set to low. I would turn those up. I'd also make the chime when charging is complete to ring out more than once so you don't miss it. It has lots of protection, so short circuit, temperature, capacity, timeout, cutoff, and over voltage protection, and multi language support as well. The fan on this is pretty quiet. It doesn't run all the time. Uh, I wouldn't want to have it on when I'm recording audio, but it's perfectly fine to have it run away in the background. It doesn't sound like a jet taking off. The majority of the lower half of the case is actually the fan and cooling assembly for the internals. And with it being Sky RC, it is firmware upgradable, and you can get to that in the menus. So there's only a couple of things to note, really. Uh, first of all is the looks. Uh, this is quite a cute little charger, but it absolutely does look like a children's toy. There is an all-grey version if you want to kind of stay with the classic black and greys. Uh, so just be aware of that if you're ordering one. There are different options available. I'm not sure why connecting the balance tap would take the discharge current from 10 watts to 25 watts. To be honest, if you are regularly discharging batteries, I would get yourself one of the dedicated dischargers. I have one behind me on there, and that's what I use at the end of a flying day for those batteries that didn't quite make it into the plane, or maybe in the quad I flew it for a shorter time than I expected to, and then didn't want to use the battery again, take them all down to storage voltage to keep them safe. And uh, sadly, no USB charging ports. I'm not a big surprise. This is teeny weeny probably struggle to fit one on here personally i like at least one usb port that i can use on a charger even a little field charger like this it's just handy to top up things like your goggles battery or your gopro or whatever it is while you stood there having a quick drink in between flights waiting for all your batteries and stuff to charge what a long way we have come since 2006 and that original B6 charger. This is a modern alternative with all the kind of features you would expect from a little charger like this. My question is, who is this really aimed at? To use it, you have to have a DC power supply. If you do have a DC power supply, if you've already invested that much in the hobby, you probably want a dual charger at this point. Um, this is absolutely what I'd have probably bought back in the day for my first charger. Uh, but back then you had to buy the charger and then the bench DC power supply. There are some fantastic chargers around like things like the D2 and its successors, which give you AC and DC alternatives. The big difference with that, I guess, is the fact that this is about 33, 34 pounds as opposed to 90, 100 pounds for those ones that also have an AC and DC option and have dual charging too. But maybe as a second charger that you carry around with you, you could almost keep this in the battery box. It's that small. Uh, it's a handy thing to have. You could use it and keep it with you so that you could top up flight batteries from other used batteries that you had kicking around. Um, and it actually does appear to work well from the testing that I've got here. So I thought I'd just get this in and show you. For me, it's a little bit of nostalgia to have a B6 charger in my hands, even if it's this little baby Neo. But if you are looking for your first charger, do check out the other reviews on the channel. There's lots of option at the moment. This £33, £35 area is very similar to lots of chargers that are only DC to DC. But in my experience, for the cost of a DC bench power supply and all the other gubbins, it's usually, if you're coming into the hobby, worthwhile just buying one that will do both AC and DC. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.